On August 5th, NASDAQ had the worst open since 2020. Simultaneously, the Japanese stock market got a complete halt on positions and had the worst day since 1987. Fast forward two weeks and we're back to where we started <laughs> when it comes to price. And that just goes to show you that you cannot always buy into the fear and into the news that you see in that moment. See, when it comes to trading, guys, everything is about market psychology, fear, optimism, all the different emotions that you can experience in your day to day life completely translates into trading. And if you don't learn how to master those emotions and how to actually think the opposite of 99% of people, you will always be in that trap. So I'm going to show you guys what that actually looks like on the chart and how we can start preparing for either the next bull run or the next crash the right way. So the first type of market psychology that I want to go over is when you're looking at this from an investor's point of view, maybe you are buying and holding stocks, maybe you have index funds, maybe you even have something like Bitcoin or some other cryptos that you're hoping for it to rally over the next several years. This is called the Wall Street cheat sheet. I first saw this over five, six years ago when I first got started trading. And right away, I realized, man, this is all a mental game, right? We always will go from disbelief to euphoria and back. And it takes you having experience and really seeing this truly play out over a couple of different asset classes for you to see how it really works. Now, again, when we start off, you know, maybe you're getting into something like the stock market, right? And you uh, just had a recent, you know, bear market you're in disbelief that the market could probably ever come back, etc. Now, keep in mind, this is something that really happens with amateur traders or the majority of people out there. Professionals understand this and shy away from buying into any real emotions because they have a trading system. They have a strategy. They have a way of perceiving the markets outside of their emotions, right? But again, the average person is going to look at the markets from afar, not really have any true education. And so this is going to reveal, you know, how they just see things uh, from a very, you know, on the top perspective. So, again, somebody's in disbelief. The market starts to rally up. They're like, oh, you know, it's moving. Cool. Right. They start having a little bit of hope. Right. That it's possible for something to make money. Over time, you will, ex you will experience that you just go from optimism to belief to thrill to euphoria. The best time I can really say uh, I've seen euphoria happen uh, was when we were in 2020, heading into 2021, where Bitcoin had reached all time highs of uh, high 60s. And everybody was like, wow, we are finally seeing crypto get to where we believed it to be. Uh, we are officially going to 100K. Uh, NFTs were booming, right? Everything was just on the up and up. And whenever we start to experience euphoria, right? Everybody becomes a market expert. Everybody says I knew it all along, right? That's when I start to get a little bit nervous if I am buying and holding something because when it's too easy and it's too obvious that everything is going super well, that tends to be when the big players and the market makers, etc., are going to take profit, are going to sell off their shares, their portions, and really just rebalance the market. You see, guys, the market always needs to have a cycle of boom and bust, bear bull, you know, it has to always be in a balanced state. And so whenever we have something that goes up, especially very quickly, it will come down very quickly as well. Um, so again, I bring up cryptocurrency first and foremost, because it is something that is such a newer industry and there's so much retail involved that this really comes to light uh, more obviously. Right. But the stock market is the same way. And that's what really brought me to want to make this video right now, because we just recently over the last couple of weeks saw that we had, you know, US 30, the Nasdaq, the S&P have a very strong uh, flash crash. Right. We saw even international markets like the Japanese stock market halt trading and have one of the worst days in decades. Right. But two weeks later, we are basically back at the same price points from when we started seeing those sell offs. And so I had a lot of people that, you know, messaged me, you know, that don't really trade, um, that know I do this. And they were like, oh, you know, what should I do with my retirement money, my 401ks, et cetera. And first and foremost, I'm not a licensed financial advisor, right? I don't give financial advice, but what I know is what I personally would do. 
right? And when it comes to especially uh, retirement plans, 401ks, they're always invested into some type of index funds, right? The NAS, uh, the uh, S&P, right? And it doesn't make any sense to pull out when the market is having a slight retracement or a sudden drop because historically, guys, the S&P and the stock market is just rallying and rallying and rallying year after year, decade after decade outside of those small periods of time like the 08 banking crisis, uh, 2020 with COVID, etc. So again, you need to always get educated or have somebody that is a professional in money management and investing that can give you proper advice when it comes to navigating the psychology of what you're seeing in the markets if you're not really involved like that. Now, if you're watching this channel, you probably are somebody that is day trading, somebody that um, you know already has a little bit of experience in the markets maybe. And so you definitely want to master this understanding and catch yourself because even though we've been trading for a long time, it doesn't mean that we don't feel these type of emotions. It just means that we don't allow those emotions to dictate our decisions when it comes into the market, right? Now, a lot of people, they know this very basic thing where it's buy low, sell high, right? But whenever we get into our emotions, that logic completely goes out of the window because when we are rallying on something like, again, a stock, a crypto, anything, and we are just seeing it continue to push, 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 more people are going to be posting their profits. More people are going to be talking about how great it is. The FOMO really starts to kick in. And that's when a lot of people start wanting to buy in, but they're buying high. So again, you need to be able to separate the two. Simultaneously, if we have a market that has completely like plummeted, right? And people are starting to panic, get scared, think that their money's going to zero, etc. That's when it's low. That's probably logically the best time to buy, but emotions say otherwise. So again, this is not a uh, cheat sheet or a guide into knowing when to buy one specific asset, right? It's not like, you know, you can look at one specific stock and you see that it's completely crashed and you're like, oh, perfect time to buy. That market, that company may be going out of business. So it's not to say that when a market completely crashes, you need to buy right away, right? It depends what you're looking at. But in general, these are the emotions and the uh, psychology cycles that you're going to see as you start to invest and get acquainted with, again, things like the stock market, crypto, etc. Question, have you been in search for a prop firm where you can actually feel safe, where you can feel like you have enough capital to make a meaningful difference in your trading? Well, I want to tell you guys about our sponsor for this video, Tradex Mastery. Guys, this is my preferred prop firm of choice in 2024. This is a broker, a prop firm that is providing up to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in trading capital. And they have a promo going on for the next several days where if you guys get started with our private mentorship program, AkashX, for just $149, you guys can actually get a free 25K challenge. Now that is absolutely huge guys. That is a value of nearly $400, but just for 149, you guys can get access to our trade alerts, tap to trade, live sessions, academy, everything included. So if you want to take advantage of this promo, again, it's only going to be live for the next couple of days. You want to go into the description of this video and get started with my enrollment link for Akashex. I will give you guys the instructions for how to receive your 25K challenge thereafter. But guys, lock in. The time is now. Now, if we look at a chart such as NAS 100, right? And this is, again, what I basically primarily only trade now from a day trading perspective. This 19500 price point was such a crucial level for us to catch very, you know, high, highly profitable trades, right? High risk to reward opportunities. And on my live session uh, back in like the end of July, uh, we were talking about this 19,500 level and how basically we were going to dictate whether we were going to start seeing new all time highs potentially in the market or if we were going to see the market really come down aggressively. So I was prepared to take advantage of this movement. I gave scenarios based off of the Liberty strategy that I use on a day trading side um, for looking at, again, potential buys or sells. 
Uh, we started seeing that we got a breakout of the Liberty Low, started looking for sell scenarios. How far it was going to go was obviously something that I don't know. Um, but that was the turning point where we actually started seeing all of that financial news coming out about the market plummeting and creating terrible uh, news for investors around the world, right? People started panicking at that point uh, during this week of sell-offs. Now, if we look, we have, again, already corrected that movement back to this 19500 level. So what that goes to show you guys, again, is the actual visual of what I'm talking about, about not buying into the news right away or not just assuming that because, uh, you know, all of these major, uh, you know, uh, financial news centers are saying that we're in a crash, a potential global recession that you need to be selling. You need to understand the technicals, right? The charts, not just the fundamentals or what you hear, because if you just do one or the other without having a total uh, understanding, you're going to always see the picture halfway and you're not going to be able to make the best decisions going forward if you treat the market like that. So now that we are back at this 19,500 level, we're actually going to be again assessing where are we going from here? Are we going to start breaking and closing above this level? Are we going to actually start seeing us break below again? This 19,500 level is going to be crucial. And I want to use this to segue into the second uh, form of market cycle psychology that I wanted to talk about, which is really more from a day trading perspective, not so much from a long term buying and holding slash investing perspective. And I started realizing this when I started learning smart money concepts about things like um, liquidity, started looking at the market in a sense where where are people's stop losses? What are the average traders, you know, seeing um, in the markets to make decisions? And again, we're going to use this 19,500 level as a point of reference because it really tells a lot, right? It shows a lot that we can learn from here. So taking it back to before we actually had that massive crash a few weeks back, this 19,500 level, I think that anybody that has general trading experience can easily agree that they would call this a quote unquote uh, support and resistance area. For me, I just call it a key level. Same thing, right? It's where price has bounced off or broken through, right? Now, notice that whenever we are trading around areas of support and resistance or levels of liquidity, right, where we see a lot of people having stop losses in and around here, they wanna take trades in and around this area, uh, we're going to see that the market will really play tricks on the way that you uh, can play positions here, right? So for example, we had been rallying, rallying, rallying up to this 19,500 level, and we see that we actually started breaking above 19,500. For anybody that is looking at this like a support and resistance level, that's gonna be an early sign that you're like, oh, okay, perfect, we're breaking above 19,500, we should go for buys. Now, we obviously see now looking back at it that that was really just basically a fake out above that 19,500 level that segued us into a massive sell off. And when you start looking at things, especially from a intraday to scalping perspective, you're going to see a lot of times where the market is going to make false rallies. And that is a very important piece to how I actually day trade uh, things like NASDAQ, where we're going to see the market impulse into one way and then completely shift the other way, essentially triggering all of these sell stops, buy stops, sell limits, buy limits, all different types of orders that you can place in the market. There are certain models that are going to basically stop out almost all of those traders before making the true move. And so, for example, again, at that 19,500 level, we're in a markup right here. We saw a lot of people that could say, man, you know what? We are in a bullish market, right? We are pushing up. We've been rallying. Now we're respecting this 19,500 level. What happens is a lot of people are going to be setting buy stop orders here. Buy stop orders essentially at 19,500. If it breaks above that, we're going to be put into buys. We see an early profit that eventually melts down hitting stop loss. Now for all the people that are trading, for example, resistance, right? Maybe you are a break and retest trader. We saw that again at that 19,500 level recently, we had price 
respect that level, break through it, and now we are retesting that level. What happens is a lot of people can sell that 19,500 level early, and what happens is, is that with this small impulse above that, they too get stopped out before the actual true move happens in the market. So again, from that smart money concepts background that I have, um, as far as entry models and understanding where we can see stop hunts at, um, key levels, areas of support and resistance, those are going to be the levels where we are going to see this phenomenon happen over and over and over. So again, buy stop traders getting stopped out, sell, uh, sell limit traders right at 19,500 get poked out and then they drop it. So you need to really, I would say, kind of allow the market some more time to truly understand if we're having a true fake out or breakout of specific levels, right? So that is the psychology of intraday slash scalping is not falling for fake outs as much as possible. And at the end of the day, you're never going to get it 100% correct all the time, but it's about the anticipation that we cannot just blindly trust levels um, or the first you know, hint of price action around those levels. You always want to have a little bit of patience and let the market really show you what it's trying to do. Right. Again, we had some nice pushes above, but nothing very convincing that we were respecting that level. We started seeing that breakout to the downside, tried rallying one more time and then really started melting. Right. This was the ideal sell position after sitting around that that five uh, 19,500 level for quite some time. All right. So now heading into where we are currently at right now, we saw the same type of thing happen again. We saw that. NASDAQ started testing 19,500 and you can see if we drop to smaller time frames, how the market started actually creating um, a little bit of hesitation with trying to decide a direction here. So you can see it sitting around for really about a whole hour or two or more here. Um, this was on Thursday. I saw a lot of people messaging me saying, hey, we're at that 19,500 level. It looks like we're, you know, trying to sell off from there. I said, guys, have some patience because you know, this level is not, you know, proven that we have any true sell off happening just yet. Sure enough, we started rallying in market after hours during Asia and started continuing above. Now, at this point, a lot of people are going to be looking at the fact that we tried selling and now pushing up to then start buying. <laughs> what happens is we have a huge sell off. So again, this happens over and over where we start to have false rallies that end up selling off. Now, you can see that it doesn't just do it one way. It'll do it in the opposite direction as well. At this point, a lot of people selling off. Uh, and a lot of people are seeing the market here and saying, man, it is time to go for sales, right? We have already kind of broken below this level. And guess what happens? Price at that point has a huge push to the upside. So the market, you know, just when you think it's ready to buy, will sell off. And just when you think it's melting, will push up. And this is very prominent, especially with indices and NASDAQ. You know, as you trade different things like Forex pairs, gold, silver, oil, you know, they all have their different tendencies. But for the most part, guys, um, this is why you need to develop a trading strategy. This is why you need to have rules for trade management, because we never truly know which direction the market is going to take especially around the key levels where it's going to be a very important decision making level. We're going to see both buys and sells get tested a little bit before we really get the true move, right? For me, I started seeing the sell opportunities with the Liberty strategy. It was slightly in profit about 2%. And then we ended up going back to break even. So yes, did I anticipate sells once we started breaking 19,500 to the downside? Absolutely. Uh, but we did not take any losses there because of the trade management rules of moving our stop losses to entry once we are up at least a one to one risk to reward ratio. So moving forward, and this is something I'm going to be talking about on our Sunday market outlook calls um, and through my live sessions via Akashex this week is how we actually start to open this week um, around 19,500 once again. So really, again, what I'm going to be looking for is price to really either show us that it's respecting this level and going for buy scenarios or showing us that it is indeed wanting to sell off again and going for sell scenarios. Again, utilizing the rules from the Liberty strategy that I've created. 
So again, guys, just from an intraday perspective, it's not about getting the trade right 100% all the time. We're never gonna be able to do that. However, it is important to understand the psychology of how people get in and out of trades, especially when you're scalping or trading on smaller timeframes where you're more prone to stop hunts, fake outs, et cetera. And when you start to realize that the market does move in that manner, you're gonna be more prepared to either be a little bit more patient with your entries or to really start anticipating those fake outs and getting sniper entries with your day trading positions. So guys, with that said, whether you are long-term investing into a market or whether you are day trading a certain asset class, you wanna keep in mind a very easy to remember uh, mentality to have, which is, is it, if it's too obvious, it's probably going the other way. Right. If the buys are too obvious, the sells are probably coming. If the sells are too obvious, the buys are probably coming. You always want to have a skeptical attitude when it comes to jumping into a position. And the second thing I'd say is how can we start to actually know? You're never going to know. But when you create a rule based system, you give yourself a shot at higher probabilities of winning. And when you pair that with a great risk to reward model, you're going to be able to handle those losses, even if you are getting faked out uh, with wins that compensate for those losses. So guys, again, think the opposite of the 99% and develop a rules based trading system that allows you to take advantage of people that are just not mentally understanding the game of trading. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on those post notifications for all future videos coming from this channel, guys. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day, and let's run it up.